Hello, Mike. You look terrific. How, how do you feel, not how do you look? Um, things have been going pretty good here. Uh, we just got up and we're getting ready for a new day to uh, unload the progress a little bit more and uh, start getting ready for this ex pretty exciting EVA, I think, that the two, uh, my two guys are going to do, Vasily and Sasha, in about a week's time, we think. Did you get everything you need in the uh, progress vehicle? Uh, yes, I did. I'm really grateful to the guys who really hustled. I mean, they did an amazing piece of work in uh, about two weeks to get some pieces together for me, and uh, I'm pretty much set up now in the Command 2 module, which is uh, where the airlock is for going outside uh, the space station. And uh, it joins on to the, the node of this uh, station complex where the uh, EVA done by Vasily and Sasha uh, plays. Are you getting enough rest, and do you think everyone will uh, be ready for the EVA? Yes, I think so. Um, I think the ground understands that, you know, we have an awful lot of work to do here, and uh, we're getting through it pretty fast and efficiently, I think. And uh, we'll probably get the extra day or two of grace that uh, is going to be needed. So, yeah. I, I think it's important that uh, we know what your own physical constraints are and your uh, living constraints, and I'm glad to see that you feel comfortable about that. How do you feel about your safety? you feel comfortable, sanguine with it at the present time? So your, uh, your comm just dropped out there. Can you say that again, please? How do you feel about the safety conditions on board right now? Are you sanguine with it? Oh, I've always been sanguine with it. Um, I think uh, basically we have time to move, even in a in pretty extreme situation where we have a, a, a leak and the pressure's falling pretty fast. Um, we had time to think and consider about what we're doing. Um, oops. <laughs> This is our friend that we put up on the, uh, the progress. It's going to be used to seal off, uh, to, to allow the pass-through of the umbilicals from the uh, uh, module spectre. And what this, this is going to attach onto the, uh, the module spectre, onto the end cone. Imagine the spectre stretching off this way to the side. And uh, on the inside of the node, there will be accessible to us under normal uh, pressure these connectors. But what Vasily and Sasha are going to do um, is, on the back side, they've already been stuck some cables, like a kind of a medusa of cables. And then during the EVA, Vasily and Sasha will connect to these cables, um, the power cables that are now floating free um, in Spectre that would provide um, the means to get the power from Spectre to the base block. Sorry, I got distracted there by this thing floating in by me. Um, generally, the safety concerns here, though, I think, are, are, are well met. and. Uh, I'm not, I'm not worried. Tell you, my hat's off to our Russian colleagues. That's one incredible piece of hardware to put together in days. I wish we had the rapid reaction time in the United States that I see uh, sitting in your hand there. We have a lot to learn from the Russians. So I, I agree with you. I, uh, I am particularly impressed by this piece of work. The, uh, the plan has come together. Sergei Krikalov was on the console asking us questions even about a day or two after the, uh, the accident. And we, I had to ask him, what are you inventing? I could tell there's something going on, and uh, this is what they invented. And it, I must say, the plan's looking like it's coming together. And, uh, you know, a lot, we had a lot of questions. There still are questions about how to do the EVA, where I'll be during it in the Soyuz and what we'll do. But um, I think those questions are being answered. Well, I tell you, I think this is a very valuable experience, and I salute your courage and Vasily and Alexander because this could cover a contingency situation which could occur on the International Space Station. And learning how to work through this, I think, is very important. And sticking with the mission is very important. Well, I agree with you uh, entirely on that. I think uh, the biggest lesson I'm getting out of this is, is how do we respond to a situation? And uh, this situation isn't going to be a one-off occurrence. Uh, we're going to have events like this, I think, in the future in our combined space programs. And uh, the way we're learning to work together, the way we are understanding how people respond to these emergencies is um, very, very useful. You know, uh, we're getting uh, down on the surface of Mars, and I don't think you've had the privilege of seeing some of the incredible pictures. Michael, train, because you're still young enough to go to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I'd love to hear that. <laughs> no, I, 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 it, we have been really thrilled to hear about the Mars landing, and uh, I must say, I think we're one of the, some of the few people Actually, we're off the planet, but, you know, from Earth, who have not seen those pictures yet. Um, we want to very much, and 
and uh, I've only been thinking about what's going on on Mars with that, that fantastic lander, Pathfinder. When we're flying over northern Africa, it's, uh, it's a red, red uh, sand now. There's almost no clouds present. And, of course, there's a little bit of a blue tint to the horizon. But uh, it makes me think about what it would be like to be in orbit around Mars, and I do think um, we should be doing that pretty soon. I got wonderful briefings today from the brilliant young people here at the Johnson Space Center. And I challenged them to get us to Mars for a very, very low price in a short period of time and do outstanding work. And I tell you, we're going to pull it off, and I think we're going to do it in your career time. time. Well, I can believe that because I'm so impressed by uh, the way the Pathfinder mission has gone off. I think uh, the way that was done for so much less money than in the past and uh, done so quickly was really, really impressive. You should see the excitement of the young engineers and the, uh, the mature young engineers at the JPL. They are just on fire. I've been watching them on television. I'm so proud of them. I tell you, I'm so proud of the whole NASA team. You folks in space, our Russian colleagues, and the people here on the ground. And I'll try my best to get some pictures up to you and Vasily and Alexander as soon as humanly possible, because I'd like you to share the excitement with us. Thank you very much. We'd appreciate that. And I'd like to offer my congratulations to the JPL team and the NASA team that have pulled all this stuff off. And uh, I'd like to thank you. I'd like to thank everybody in particular for the incredible response um, in, in our own uh, presence kind of moment. I, I found uh, the response instantaneous, um, helpful. There was never any feeling that, you know, the communication was down or lacking. And uh, I'm very grateful for uh, the NASA team and for the Russian team for what they've done. Well, I tell you, Michael, we think you're terrific. We think Vasily and Alexander's terrific. There's a lot of people on the ground that read about you and see you on TV day and night. Our thoughts are with you, and uh, play it safe. My name is Natalie Woods from Shaw High School, and what is your role as the mission specialist? My role as a mission specialist on this uh, flight is to uh, do a lot of the science experiments. I'm a member of the orbiter, uh, the payload crew here. We're split up into two halves. Uh, half the astronauts are running the shuttle and taking care of all the shuttle systems. The other half are taking care of the experiments back in the space lab module where I am right now. And I'm part of the uh, payload crew, and we work back here in two shifts uh, around the clock, 24 hours a day. My name is Katie Ruda from Magnificat High School. And how do you start a controlled fire in space? Well, we have a number of combustion experiments, and uh, to control the fires, we have special combustion chambers that uh, they protect us and the fires from spreading, and they have many layers of containment so they don't get out of control. And I'm standing in, in front of one of the experiments right here. It's a droplet combustion experiment, and uh, it's just an example. It's a pretty heavy steel chamber where the uh, combustion process actually takes place, so we're well protected. Uh, from any explosions or from the fires, you know, getting out and affecting other parts of the shuttle. My name is David Lafka. I'm from Holy Cross School, and I'm in a university program for the, the summer. And my question is, do you ever get a chance to talk to your family in private? That's a great question, and it's a coincidence that I just talked to uh, my wife and my son. I have a two-year-old boy and I was able to talk to them. And on this flight, it's the first flight uh, since I've been an astronaut that we've been able to have two-way video. So I could actually look at a little video monitor of my wife and my son sitting there, and they were having, they could see a monitor watching me, and we were having a conversation for maybe 15 minutes. And then uh, maybe two hours later, I had a, a chance on our amateur radio to talk to my mother up in Bloomington, Indiana. So uh, we typically we get a chance uh, maybe every four days or so to talk to our families, to have one of these video conferences we do have electronic mail that we can transfer back and forth, and we talk to our families, send messages back and forth on a daily basis. And it's one of the greatest things every day, one of the highlights uh, outside of doing the experiments and looking out the window. It's always great to get messages from home. Hey, my name is Maya Davis. I'm from Laurel High School, and I was wondering, how do you go about preventing muscle and bone degeneration? Okay, I understand. Yeah, up here, uh, you don't use any of your muscles. You know, if I want to move throughout the orbit, it just takes a little push with my finger, and I go across the space lab module here. So I don't have to use any muscles walking or getting up or moving anything around. Uh, so your muscles do atrophy up in space. What we do is we have an exercise bike called an ergometer, 
and e each of us ride it about a half an hour a day, and that helps get your uh, cardiovascular system, gets the blood pumping again, and uh, help keep us in shape a little bit for landing. When we land, uh, you know, you are a little bit out of shape. I feel like a thousand pound person trying to get out of my seat at landing, but it takes, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes or so, and you're able to get up and walk around and, and feel pretty good. Hi, my name is Katie Haller. I'm from Magnificat High School. And my question is, um, what environmental information do you hope to gain from your combustion experiments? Yeah, the combustion experiments, uh, the main goal are twofold. One is to uh, maybe increase the efficiency of burning. You know, so much of our energy down on the ground, from your automobiles to power plants and electrical generation, they're all combustion processes. And we're trying to understand maybe ways to improve the efficiency. If we can just improve it 1% or 2%, a very small fractional increase, it would have a major impact around the world. Secondly, we're trying to understand the, the soot process. When flames burn, if you look at a candle flame, you'll see a black soot coming, emanating from the flame. And we're trying to understand better what creates the soot, how do you control that, and that will have a major impact potentially on the ground from a pollution point of view. Hi, my name is J.L. Panagaris from North Ridgeville High. I was wondering what kind of preparations do you have to go through so that you are physically and mentally ready to perform your tasks? That's a great question. Uh, physically, you know, all astronauts try to stay in pretty good shape. Uh, most people run. We have a, a gym that we all work out at. And my main activity, I like to go swimming. So I, I swim a mile and a half almost every single day that I can when I'm back on Earth. And so that, that's the physical part of it. Mentally, you just have to uh, get prepared. You've got to know all your material and work really hard at it. For all these experiments that we're performing on the shuttle here, we've been training for a year and a half or two years on each of the experiments to make sure we know exactly how to perform them inside and out so that if we have a problem, you know, we can solve it up here. So it's a lot of mental training and, and physical training. And, and then come launch morning, you know, you're pretty psyched to get on the shuttle. I'm, I'm probably 20% uh, uh, a little afraid and 80% and just, uh, you know, psyched out of my mind and excited about going on the trip. Hey, this is some footage from yesterday where Roger and I did an in-flight maintenance procedure back in the lab. And the purpose of this procedure was to rewire a thermocouple in the LIF furnace. And uh, basically the way this works is uh, the ground researches it for as much time as they need, and then they fax us up a procedure which basically in this case involves routing some wires from pins on one side of the connector to sockets on the other side of the connector. And so we got the wires out of a little kit that we carry in the orbiter. And then Roger and I both together very carefully uh, made sure that we got the wires going from the right pin to the right socket. Uh, as is sometimes the case in space, things don't work out exactly the way you planned. And as it turned out, the, uh, the darn sockets on the ends of the wires were a little or the pins, I'm sorry, were a little loose in the sockets on the connectors so they wouldn't stay in. And so here you see me getting some duct tape. And uh, I'll tell you, I think we'd be lost without duct tape up here. We use it for pretty much everything. And uh, anyhow, we were able to uh, duct tape those things into place. And then you can see how we've got them restrained there. And uh, it worked. It was very successful. And uh, we're back up and uh, working with the science. So that was a... a Good example of how we can work together as a team with the ground to fix little problems that occur during the flight. One of my jobs on STS-94 is Earth observation. We have an extensive Earth observation program, and it has been ongoing for, since the beginning of the shuttle program. We're interested in all types of Earth observation, 